Welcome to Digital Asset News. to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, another great day and a top story of billionaire investor Novogratz, Mike Novogratz, says Bitcoin will hit, check this out, 14000 by October and close the year at $20,000. Yeah, we'll see. Also, Cardano is on fire and they bring in 500 into their stake pools a day after the Shelly launch. And this is gonna lead into a pretty important question which was posed to me by Christopher as I do the question of the day which talks about how do I take Cardano off of the Voyager app and into my own wallet so I can actually stake Cardano and make some free money. And we'll get into all that, but first let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is the 31st of July and it is about uh, 10 a.m. Texas time, trying to get these things done early. Kind of gonna go golfing today, see how that works out. But look Looks like we got Bitcoin uh, doing still pretty good, up 3%. Jeez, that's amazing. Uh, and for the for the one week, 17.6%, uh, so not too shabby. Ethereum, 24% over seven days, 7% in a 24-hour time frame, 343. That is fantastic. XRP, hey, XRP is doing good, so uh, XRP Army must be happy, uh, 25 cents. Tether's Tether, Bitcoin cash up, Cardano down for the day, which is kind of odd, all these different uh, things going on, but that's how it goes in cryptocurrency. You know, when um, when you have these different projects, they're gonna they're gonna launch a mainnet. There's a pump and a pump and a pump, and as soon as that mainnet launch, which is which really shows that there's a lot of hard work, there's a lot of dedication, and things are gonna progress. Everybody just gets out because uh, they're like, hey, I already made my money, so I'm gonna get out. So that's a good time, in my opinion, uh, depending on what project you believe in, to actually pick up some uh, some discounted coins because if all these pump and dumpers are like, hey, you know, I, I'm just here for the money, then fine, get away. Uh, you made your money, go. I'll pick up all these cheap coins and uh, I'll see you on the back end. So just my opinion, uh, not uh, trading advice or financial advice or anything like that. Bitcoin SV, 8%, Everybody's, everything's up and uh, looking pretty good for the day. Even Chainlink, which I keep getting, <laughs> I get every so often messages about how Chainlink is a scam and da da da. If you can tell me how it is a scam, please let me know uh, because I know there was an article out, but uh, I just don't see it. Like, does it not work? Does it not do anything it just sits there or is there actually something happening because i got to tell you if it is a scam uh they have duped a lot of partners and uh that is, is an amazing thing so let me know exactly why Chainlink is a scam in the comments section and i will tell you this i was listening to ivan on tech i can't remember it was yesterday or a couple days ago and he was talking about ethereum just hit five years and uh, he talks about how he's a big believer in it and uh, whatnot. But he said, he goes, I was around when Ethereum first came out uh, and uh, all the Bitcoin maximalists said, it's a scam, it's not gonna go anywhere, it's useless, and the only thing it's created for is to steal your Bitcoin. And he said, I remember it like it was yesterday. And it's amazing how in this space, uh, how everything is a scam, either for one reason or another. But uh, really, there's only so many scams out there. I mean, you can have a project that, you know, really does well and just doesn't work. It's not a scam. It's just a failed project, you know? Uh, it's like a small business. I mean, you can't say like, uh, you know, Artie's fries down the street is a scam because, you know, he just sucks at marketing. Just that he sucks at marketing. He couldn't get people in there. I mean, the food was, you know, not a scam or whatever else. And here, I mean, sometimes it just happens. Now, BitConnect is a scam. Okay, we can all agree on that. But uh, to call everything a scam is just kind of disingenuous and uh, it just kind of tarnishes the whole thing. Uh, me personally, I uh, I kind of wait and reserve judgment. Uh, if it is a scam, then uh, I'll, be, I'll be the first one to call it a scam. But uh, I don't care what makes it. I just don't care uh, if it's my coins or some or other coins that I'm not invested in, whatever, because it's good for the whole community. Just like we always talk about, uh, as the water rushes in, all the boats all the boats rise, and it's good for everybody. So, um, yeah, let me know in the comment section, and uh, let's move on from there. First up, my man Mike Novogratz says that Bitcoin's gonna hit 14k by October and close at 20k. When I first read this, I was like, "Yeah, Mike, Mike being Mike." But as I was looking at the prices just now, I'm like, "Yeah, it's got a good point." So let's break into it. So as the traditional finance system continues to struggle through inflation, Novogratz is saying that the result will lead to uh, Bitcoin to hit new highs, 14k in the next three months, and go up to 20k by the end of the year. So uh, yeah, we'll see if that actually happens. I sure hope so. But uh, who knows? I mean, you can listen to anybody out there. You can listen to uh, uh, Dr. Doom. He says it's going to go to zero. You can listen to Mike say, you know, 14 to 20K. You can listen to some TA person who are all out there and say that, no, it's going to go this and do that, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. 
Obviously, no one knows. But I can just tell you this. I know it's going to go up in the long run because I believe in it. So he states retail interest, according to the CEO, has moved from the stock market to Bitcoin, hence the current bull run. And he says Bitcoin still has a lot of retail interest in it. A lot of that retail interest shifted to the story stocks, uh, to the tech stocks, because they were just more fun. Yesterday, you saw a lot of money shift back over to gold and Bitcoin. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of money flowing into the stock market for whatever reason, which is odd because, you know, our GDP is going in the toilet as far as America goes. And then globally, uh, it hasn't been that, that fantastic either. So it is amazing to me to see the stock market and people just invest and invest and invest. And uh, I don't know if it's the right thing. I mean, I'm not gonna say anything about that because it's it's up to you it's up to them but i mean when when people hear about the story you know i'm sure they want to get into tesla i'm sure they want to get into amazon i want to sure they want to get into those you know those big story tech stocks but once they hear the story about bitcoin and where it was and what's going to make it awesome i think people are going to you know come into it in droves and that's why you know like when when i tell the story to my friends uh i got caught short in this trying to explain this a little bit ago and i was just all over the place i sound like a maniac so i just made this this pitch I and mean, we talked about it uh you know about two three weeks ago and i just say this when people say talking about bitcoin which is more and more a matter of fact these days and i say look it's digital gold now, when I say digital gold, because that's easy for people to conceptualize. Like a gold, digital gold, got it. Uh, it's scarce, and it's like market insurance. Uh, unlike gold, uh, which you can't send, you know, it's very difficult to send, and it, it costs the armory, and it's kind of cost an armory to get out anywhere. Uh, you can send it to anyone within minutes, anywhere in the world, for next to nothing. It's the best performing asset class ever. It's better than gold, oil, or any stock ever. And it used to be worth a nickel. And now it's worth about 11000 And that's just what I say. And then they can ask me more questions later on. But the, I think the big thing here is the best performing asset class ever. And if you ever want to show somebody, you know, like just how exactly uh, Bitcoin and actually Ethereum, this one, uh, how it has done over the last, you know, 10 years or so, just show them this video. I had made this uh, about a month ago or so. And uh, it was just... Well, I, I got it from J James Hedoro, MD, and just throw in a little music, and I sped it up because it was just way too slow. But uh, you can just see, like, how, okay, we got Google, Visa, Amazon, MasterCard, Netflix, Domino's Pizza, and Lululemon, which was crushing it in 2012. <laughs> Lululemon. And then if you just kind of speed it up, you can just see Bitcoin. Wow, I went too fast. Uh, here's Bitcoin here. You know, not doing so hot, 29%, 30%. And then up, there it is, 1,000%. And then from here, it just takes over. Uh, and, uh, you know, Domino's somehow flips them every so often. But uh, after the December 2013, you don't see anything uh, until Ethereum starts to starts to rise up. So uh, I'm just going to fast forward this. And you can see it. And you can just show them this video. And you can say, look, um, I know what people are saying. You know, they say it's a risky asset. But uh, well, the last 10 years, not too shabby. So uh, if you want to get into something like that, uh, that's what I'd recommend. And that's what that's what I tell all my friends uh, right now. So anywho, back to the story. So to finish up, uh, he talks about the stimulus checks. And if you don't know, uh, in America, we're going through another round. It looks like uh, Congress uh, has tentatively agreed to a uh, type of deal. And it's going to be the same type of stimulus checks, about $1,200. And he states here the second stimulus check of $1,200 is about to go into circulation. The multi-billion dollar package will add to liquidity and cause investors to turn Bitcoin uh, for safety. And I think that's why uh, gold has been skyrocketing uh, because it is a hard asset and it has a finite supply and it's been used for thousands of years and the monetary policy is set unlike what the Federal Reserve is doing. So um, I see Bitcoin going up, only going up. Uh, the CEO, like many other Bitcoiners, this was interesting, I didn't know Mike had this much money, he has put in, in a significant amount of money into Bitcoin. 20% of his net worth has gone into Bitcoin. But with gold, he says he's only got about a 5%. And he was a huge gold bug. So you got someone who says, you know, one out of $5 I have, I'm getting right into Bitcoin. That's something. That's uh, That shows me that he believes in it. So I like that. Let's move on to our next story. Next up, 500 stake pools, which is going to lead to our question of the day. So what's going on here? So Cardano Shelly Upgrade has seen fast growth. Hundreds of stake pools joined the network within 24 hours. Average July 29th loss or uh, launch. <laughs> At its post launch peak, Cardano had 491 stake pools in operation, according to a press release. However, that number is constantly changing 
and was currently at 460, 16 active stake pools at the time of writing. And Crypto Briefing, I got to tell you, fantastic website, uh, really good reporting. Uh, it's going to be one of my new faves. So uh, this is from adapools.org. So let's take a look and see what we got for stake pools. Right now, bam, 502. And uh, you can take a look at all the different Cardano pools, uh, the shares per stake, uh, fees, tax average pledge. Uh, oh, One million pledge? Amazing. It's a lot of stuff, and I didn't I didn't look down here. Uh, so, geez, Louise. All right, not too shabby. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely going to lead into our next uh, section. So, stick with me. All right, Cardano's testnet statistics may predict future participation on the blockchain as of June twenty second. The testnet had over a thousand or a thousand sixty one registered pools, ninety six active, and twelve point nine billion Cardano staked. That's huge. Uh, to finish this up. How far are we? Yeah, finish this up. Cardano is the, or decentralization is the goal for Cardano. Cardano aims to achieve maximum decentralization by encouraging the community to distribute its wealth across a large number of stake pools. In this regard, Cardano's closest competitor might be Tezos, which has about 425 active bakers with whom coin holders can stake their crypto with minimal effort and maintenance. IOHK, company for Cardano, argues that uh, mining-based blockchains do not have this sort of decentralization. On, on Bitcoin and Litecoin, for example, miners are concentrated within a few uh, mining pools. Before I read the last sentence, um, we have gone round and round about this on this channel, and thanks to all the different miners who have helped to educate me and tell me that, you know, uh, we don't have to go to Poolin or BTC.com or Antpool. We can pick up and leave anytime we want to and go to any of the other pools, even though these guys and gals have a ton of different uh, miners and they seem to be the um, major party here. We can pick up and leave anytime we want to. So they're not ever going to control 51%. I get that. I understand that your rig is your rig and you can put it anywhere you want to. However, the question I always ask is, these guys have the cheapest electricity. And cheap electricity is really what drives the whole operation because the cheaper your electricity, the more you can have fun rewards. The higher, the less rewards, you, not rewards, but I mean price and revenue that you actually bring in. So my question is, if they had the cheapest, why would you go anywhere else? I mean, on, on ethics and morals, I suppose you're like, hey, I don't want to have 51% you know, attack because that'd be bad for everybody. Yes, I get that. But for right now, I think a lot of the miners are like, hey, I just want to get paid. And uh, so that's my my thinking let me know uh, where my flaw is and put that in the comment section but to uh to finish this up it states it's not clear whether stake and delegation based black blockchains are superior to mining based blockchains and we'll see over time so here's my question everybody what's your thoughts uh i think proof of stake is going to be the future i don't see proof of work um not lasting for the next 20 years. I just I just don't see it. Now for Bitcoin, I mean, it seems like everybody wants to, to mine Bitcoin, so maybe that'll stick around. But as far as like the new projects that are coming out, I just think it's gonna be a proof of stake type of thing. Um, but let me know what you think here in the comments section. And this will lead us to question of the day. So let's jump into my office. All right, everybody, so welcome back to the office. It's a nice breezy sunny day in El Paso, Texas. And uh, Christopher, had a pretty good question, and his question uh, states, hey Dan, this isn't a business inquiry, so I apologize, but he states, uh, I bought uh, ADA or Cardano on the Voyager app with your friend's code, so thank you. If I wanted to hold the keys for Cardano that I have there, I'm hoping you can help me out, uh, get the investment off of Voyager, uh, not wanting a long-term hold there. So the, I think the big statement here from Christopher is I don't want a long-term hold there. So I think he's okay with just being there for a little bit of time, which I think most of us would be okay with that as far as Voyager. And he says the thing with Voyager is that it's not an exchange, but a brokerage. I'm, I'm new, so forgive me. Uh, but how can I get uh, Cardano off of Voyager into my own wallet? So Christopher, uh, it's a pretty good question. And it's a question that, that comes up uh, quite a bit uh, as far as Voyager. So if you don't know, um, in the uh, description of every one of my videos, there is a link, looks something like this. And what it's gonna show you, it's gonna link to an actual uh, Excel, or sorry, a Google spreadsheet that is all the different exchanges and wallets that I have used or am using or have reviewed. Uh, because I wanted to give you an alternative to Coinbase because you know, Coinbase has their issues, which we've talked about 
uh, ad nauseum on this channel. So, uh, so for Coinbase, as listed here, I've got Coinbase Pro, uh, Celsius, Voyager, Gemini, Gemini Pro, I pulled Abra, Simple Swap, Cash App. And I just did a uh, uh, a semi review of Crypto.com. You can you can read that there. But uh, my one-two punch personally is uh, the Voyager app because I like to uh, buy things. <laughs> I like to buy cryptocurrencies, but I don't like to pay any kind of fees, so they don't have fees for that. I mean, there is, you know, they get their, uh, their services paid for by, by the spread. I don't care because I don't see it. Uh, it's kind of like Robinhood where they give you, you know, free transactions, so fantastic. And then from there, I will transport uh, a portion of that into the Celsius wallet because I like to get free money uh, because they pay you just for holding things there. So, you know, it's a, it's a winner winner. So that's, these are the two types of wallets I like to use. Now, one of the problems with Voyager wallet that people have uh, told me and that something that I actually uh, experienced too is that you can't um, move all of the cryptocurrencies that are offered on Voyager off of Voyager. And I think, I, first of all, I can't speak for Voyager. I don't know why they don't allow all of them. I just know that uh, when we're talking about Cardano in, uh, specifically here, there are certain exchanges that do not offer Cardano right now, Coinbase being one of them, Gemini being another one, and some other ones we're gonna go over in a second. So with Voyager, um, they let you buy it, but they don't let you to export it. Now, I think at some point, just like Coinbase is gonna list Cardano and Gemini will follow suit, I think Voyager at some point will obviously let you do that, just not right now. So what do we do if we buy Cardano on Voyager and we don't wanna wait at any time for Voyager to, to step up and allow us to put it on into our own wallet and do all the staking, all that cool stuff that we wanna do. So let's take a look here. Uh, first of all, Let's uh, go into Voyager and it says we have to understand something that there is a to transport anything off of Voyager. There is a small flat fee to withdraw crypto to an external wallet and the current fee for transfer transfers are and you can see all the different ones we have here. But just to keep it simple, because uh, let's not waste time. Uh, I'm going to pick two. So Bitcoin 0 0.005 and Ethereum 0 0.0075. So what I want you to notice here is that it says there is a flat fee. So I don't care if you are going to transport uh, uh, 10 Cardano or if you're gonna transport 10 billion Cardano. It is a flat fee. That is what uh, Voyager states right here. So let's just keep that simple. So the next question is, is okay, well, if I wanna transport things off of this, where can I um, put this? Because what we wanna do is, is, is take it from here uh, to an exchange or some type of um, system that will allow us to eventually put it into our actual wallet. So the easiest one, if you have this opportunity, I do not, is Binance US. Binance US, uh, you can see here, there's a listing of Cardano to USD, uh, which means they will allow you to, you know, swap it out or sell it or whatever you want to do or transport off. Great. So that's one option. The problem is with Cardano is that here are the states that Binance US does not currently support. So if you're in these states in America, uh, you're SOL. Alabama, Alaska, Connecticut, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, Louisiana, New York, North Carolina, Texas, Vermont, and Washington. So if you're in, in some of those states, sorry, it doesn't happen. Now, globally, uh, of course, <clears throat> all my friends in, in, in Canada and Mexico and parts of uh, Europe, uh, South America, um, Australia, it doesn't really matter. There's, a, there's more options for you. Just America is a real pain in the A, and uh, you know, that's just how it is, especially New York. So that is one of those things if you don't live in there. Now, our second option here, which looks pretty good, is if you live in the US, US, is Kraken. Kraken, I have actually bought Cardano, which you can see uh, right here. And then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna click on this on these three dots right here. And it's gonna say deposit or withdraw. So I can withdraw. And then from there, I can put the amount in, whatever it is, let's say 600 or whatever, I don't care. And then uh, we're gonna add an address. And of course the description and the credential address, save address, and then off it goes. So if you wanna make it simple uh, for US customers, uh, for, for global customers, not, not, not too sure, but Kraken is probably your, your best bet. Now, let's take a look at some other options because uh, on my, that handy dandy exchange fees and wallet, uh, again, if, if you're looking to sign up for these um, different exchanges, I've already talked about this, but I'll just say it again if you're new, you can use my affiliate links. Um, you don't have to. You can go right to Gemini. You can go uh, right to Voyager. You can go right to you know Celsius. 
um, and that's fine. Or you can click on these links and you can get, uh, you know, depending on $10 or $25 or whatever else it is. So it's up to you. You do whatever you want, go bananas. So for here, for like, let's take a look at some of these, like um, one of the services that I've used before to swap things over is a service called Simple Swap. And as you can see here, Cardano is not offered. So even if you were able to convert your Cardano to Ethereum and then put it over to Simple Swap, uh, it wouldn't work out. So the only way it really work out is if you take Cardano, uh, sell it into Ethereum on the Voyager app, transfer that Ethereum uh, over to uh, Kraken, and then you can transport it to your wallet. That is the easiest way. So Simple Swap doesn't do it. A lot of people have been uh, saying in the comment section about the Atomic Wallet, like, hey, what about this, you know, Atomic Wallet is so fantastic and everything else. Sure, I I've looked at it, um, and you can, um, there is an option there to exchange it. Just so you know, this was right from Atomic Wallet's website. It says Atomic Wallet takes 2% fee and a minimum of $10 per operation. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that is actually exchanging or if that is selling or if that is buying, but to me, per operation means that every single thing that it does, it's gonna charge you this minimum. So if you're looking for small transactions, Atomic Wallet might not be for you, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong in the, in the uh, comment section below. Also, um, thing about Atomic Wallet is that right now, uh, the pairs are temporary uh, unavailable because of the Shelly mainnet launch. So if we're also gonna take a look at uh, Abra, uh, that's one of the other um, wallets that I use, the same thing, uh, ADA deposits are unavailable, so you can't even use that right now. So that's all uh, an issue and uh, it's, a, it's a problem, but um, what we can do to make things simple is uh, with the Voyager app here, let's, let's uh, bring that back up. So with the Voyager app, I, I think the easiest way to do this would be to uh, take your Cardano if you really want to get it off there. I personally don't care. I'm just gonna keep it on there for a bit and then I'll stake, I'll stake some later. I have a feeling that Coinbase is going to uh, list it pretty soon and then we'll go from there. And then if Coinbase does it, then Gemini does it and then off we go. So uh, Bitcoin, it says there's a small flat fee to withdraw crypto. Okay, so if we're going to transfer Ethereum, I'm sorry, Cardano into Bitcoin, it's gonna cost, and then transfer it off, it's gonna cost us 0 0.005. So 0 0.005, if we have to take a look at that, as far as uh, Bitcoin uh, to the US dollar, that's about 550, all right? Five bucks and 50 cents is how much it's gonna cost you. Not a big deal, but if you're doing this a lot, it can be a real pain. So also, if we take a look back, and we take a look at Ethereum for this flat fee, it's 0 0.0075. So if we're, if we're gonna take um, 0 0.0075 Ethereum and transfer, the, and kind of think of that into dollars, that's $2.50. So right there, you're saving three bucks. Um, so for me personally, I would just use Ethereum. I know that there is a little bit of a delay these days because of what's, uh, you know, everything that's going on and, and uh, there's, you know, the high transaction fees and whatever else, but it doesn't seem too bad, but just be prepared to wait, especially with things that are going on with DeFi. So uh, Chris, I hope that uh, answers your question. Me personally, I'm just gonna leave it on there, but for you, I think the easiest way, if you're in the United States, is uh, Cardano, put it into it, sell it on Voyager to Ethereum, Take it from Ethereum, uh, transfer it over to Kraken, and then from Kraken, put it in your wallet. So uh, I know this seems like um, kind of a, a, a tussle and a, and a hassle, but it is because we're early. And uh, usually uh, people who are early, this is when we uh, see the most gains. Because if it was easy, not a lot of people would do it. And also uh, the gains really aren't there. So uh, that's it for that section. Let's jump back. All right, so that's it. So uh, thanks for sticking with me, really appreciate it. If you don't know, there's a join now button. Uh, it doesn't give you anything. It's just like a tip, uh, a couple bucks. And uh, I, just, I give random shout outs. So uh, Donald Francisco, welcome. Iran Rodriguez, uh, I am not I. Who else we got? Simon Coffee. We've got Jack Minton. We've got Sm <laughs> Smiley McDougal, that's a good one. And then Beloved. So thanks to everybody who signed up i really appreciate it and that's it for today if you like these types of videos there's gonna be two that are gonna pop up on your left and right don't know which ones they are because youtube controls everything and they also control the ads that are uh you see before in the middle and after i have no control over that so i know people have been complaining like how can you do scam of the day but then advertise scams i don't advertise scams YouTube has control. I have nothing to do with that. So uh, anyhow, if you like this, two vid uh, this type of video, two more up on left and right, go ahead and, ch and click on that. And I'll see you on the next one.